Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to take a final look at the FIO K11 R2R Headphone Amp DAC product. It's really, really interesting. The K11 is a compelling little product, and if you find the video interesting, I would appreciate a like and I would appreciate your subscription. And if you wish, there is a link in the video description if you want to join the channel and become a member. There's also, if you want to buy me a granola bar, there's a thank you button at the bottom. The K11 is kind of fascinating in that it is really an R to R ladder deck product. It does use 192.1% thin film resistors in a traditional dual differential, fully balanced ladder configuration. And I, there is nothing else at this price point that offers that. Everything else in and around this, you know, up to maybe $100 more is all going to be Delta Sigma and probably all ESS chipset. So that makes this really compelling. And just so you guys know, I did have a chance to compare this ladder deck against another ladder deck. I'll be right back. Oh, this beast, the Denifrips Pontus. I have this in for review. Obviously the two, oh, share nothing in common other than they're both DACs. Um, and that's about it. Where this uses 0.1% thin film resistors, the Denifrips is 0.0005% tolerance resistor. So a dramatic difference and obviously 10 times the price. But what kind of makes this one interesting is it does do 24 bit up to 384. Uh, it will do DSD up to 256, but there's a caveat. Uh, at, at this price point, you, at most ladder DACs that are inexpensive don't do DSD natively. Now the Pontus will. But this has to convert the DSD signal to PCM and then it can process it and output it. So it doesn't do native DSD all the way through the chain. And that you need to know. It has an on oversampling mode, which sounded very good. It has an oversampling mode, which brings everything up to 384. It sounded a little bit different. It wasn't dramatic. And we'll talk about it in just a second. I, I did use it as a headphone amp. And actually, I was kind of surprised. It, it sounded okay, even though the specs aren't amazing on it. Um, I used my 32 ohm Sony MDR V6s and my 300 ohm Sennheiser Mass Drop 6X, 6XX. And on single end this unit at 16 ohms puts out 660 milliwatts. At 32 ohms, it's 460 milliwatts. But at 300 ohms on single end, it's only 50 milliwatts. Um, and on balanced at 16 ohms, it's 520 milliwatts. At 32 ohms, it is 1300 milliwatts. And at 300 ohms, it's 220 milliwatts. Now, on single ended with the, the Sennheisers, obviously, there are three gain settings, low, medium, and high. So I had to run it up to high, and it provided enough power that it would go louder than I would care to listen. And it didn't start to sound compressed or anything like that. The Sonys obviously drove easily on either the low setting or the medium setting. And on balance, the Sonys aren't balanced, but the Sennheisers can be and are. On balance, uh, at Again, leaving it on high setting, it had plenty of power and got louder than I would ever want to normally listen to it. So it was really very pleasing as a headphone amp. And let's talk about the sound quality of this. Ladder DACs have, <clears throat> excuse me, have their own sonic characteristic. Now, I find, and this is personal opinion, I find that most Delta Sigma DACs, you know, that are ESS Saber chip, which most of them are going to be at $250 and under, um, have a this, I call it the Sabre glare. And it's this stridency in the mid-range and this glare in the upper frequencies that just kind of gets annoying and hard to listen to. And I've got a bunch of different Sabre DAC products in the house that I own personally. And most of the time, I don't use the DAC section. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So this doesn't exhibit that. Now, FIO targets a lot of their products toward gamers. So this has actually a very robust base, actually really nice. Um, and I think, again, that, that that's kind of more of a gamer sort of sound characteristic, but I found it to be really pleasing on music. And of course, I listen to a wide variety of stuff, and I was listening to a lot of uh, ambient electronic music. And of course, there's really good bass in that. And this was very pleasing at that. Now, in the mid-range, it does this is much smoother than than normal Delta Sigma DACs in its price range. But I did find that when the music started to get complex, that it started to sound a little congested and it was a little bit harder to pull individual instruments out of the mix. Now, no worse than any other 
Delta Sigma DAC in and around the same price. So that was comparable, but it lacked that glare. It was much smoother sounding uh, and less edgy. As you move up in the upper trebles, this is definitely smoother than most Delta Sigma DACs. Is it the last word in refinement? No, but it was pleasing enough. And I'm not, I wasn't, li I really didn't listen to any classical through this. Again, I was down the ambient electronic rat hole. And there's playlists in the description, uh, Fahrenheit Project, that's one of them that'll give you an example of what I was talking about. It actually sounded pretty good and it was pretty pleasant. Now, on the headphone side, just real quick, the Sennheisers happen to be very, very good at mid-range. Um, so it was decently smooth and it, the high frequencies on this gave my Sennheisers just a little extra um, kind of sonic character in the, in the upper frequencies. It was very pleasant. It wasn't, wasn't distracting or annoying at all. Um, and being open back, obviously the little extra bass response this had was wonderful. Now the Sonys are bass monsters. Um, so it might've been a little too much bass out of this for those, but that's just their characteristic. In the system, I plugged it into everything. I had it in the big reference system. I had it in connected to all kinds of stuff. Galleon amplifiers, I had it connected to ADCOM amplifiers, I had it connected to the Cambridge Evo, um, lots of different things. I also, you know, was decoding Artivana through it, and probably the best setup I had was more price appropriate, and that was the Cambridge MXN 10 streamer just acting as a transport feeding this, and then this outputting into the Cambridge AXR100, and that was a really excellent sound, and I actually wound up sitting and listening to it for several hours, just kind of getting lost in the music and going down that, that rabbit hole, and it was very pleasant, and so when I can take my analytical hat off and just kind of sit and listen to the music and tap my toe a little bit or, you know, enjoy it, I think that's a good advertisement for a product, so I would definitely say that I find this to be a more pleasing sound than any other Delta Sigma DAC in and around that price point from maybe a hundred to 200, $250. It really is interesting in that regard. Is it the last word in resolution? No. Is it a Denifrips Pontus? Is it a Denifrips Enyo or Aries Beater? No, not even close, but it is better than comparably priced Delta Sigma DAX. And I think, and that sound signature, I think is what makes it really interesting. If you've not heard a ladder DAC, it is worth checking it out. I mean, uh, it's not a big investment and I think you might find it really kind of pleasing. Um, so anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully you enjoyed the product. There is a link uh, to purchase a product in the video description. And I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. My subscriber count is growing wonderfully. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I am very, very grateful. The next push is to get to 4,000 subscribers and we're very close. Um, so again, I would appreciate your subscription. Please comment. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know if you've ever heard a ladder deck and what you thought of that sound, um, you know, what Delta Sigma decks do you like the sound of? Um, you know, let's get some conversation going about it. I think that's kind of a compelling thing. Also too, in the description of the video is gonna be a link for this. There is also uh, affiliate links to everything that's in my system. There is some playlists down there and I've been asking you guys to send playlists you have. I need to get some more from you, so please send me some playlists. And I would very much like it if my international viewers would send me playlists from your area because we don't get to hear necessarily the music you do. I mean, rock and roll is all kind of rock and roll, but if there's other stuff, jazz, whatever, I'd love to know what that is. So please send me a playlist for that and I'll put them in the community post. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything else. If you wish to join the channel, there's a, as I mentioned, there's a membership link. Well, that's kind of it, I think. So neat little product, the K11 R to R. It's worth investigating, I think. I, I'm gonna wind up keeping this one. I, I really was kind of engaged by it and that's a nice advertisement for it for me. Anyway, this is Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi channel saying, it's now time for you to go listen to some music, maybe on your little inexpensive R to R deck. Thanks so very much. <laughs>